Hey, welcome to the first tutorial or first uh, video in the survival sample tutorial. Um, we're going to be producing a survival game, kind of like Left 4 Dead. Uh, obviously not exactly that because that's copyrighted and we don't have permission to recreate that. Uh, we're going to be following this tutorial by Tom Lumen. It's a C++ example project covering common gameplay concepts packed in a small survival game. I'm going to go ahead and read this introduction so you know what we're getting into. This series focuses on the C++ aspect of Unreal Engine 4. The goal is to introduce a variety of gameplay concepts written in C++ with some blueprint interaction to get you more comfortable using C++ for your projects. Ah, I'm getting tired of saying C++ already. <laughs> um, by using practical examples instead of relying on theory. It's important to note that this series is not a step-by-step -step tutorial. Well, that's kind of a lie because the written one, no it's not, but the one that I am doing for you guys is going to be step-by-step. -step. So, um, the rest of that does not pertain because Obviously, we're going step by step. Um, the game is a third person survival game focusing on familiar mechanics from games in this genre. Like I said before, like Left 4 Dead, um, H1Z1, which is a newer one, um, all survival games. You'll have to find weapons to defend yourself, food and ammunition are spread throughout the level, and so you are constantly on the search for resources. Enemies may be anywhere. Making too much noise while scavenging to survive will attract attention. The zombies will eat your brains, because that's what they do best. That's all they know how to do. Um, the environment will have interactive objects to help your defense, like barricades, um, other different random things that will help you survive, or kill zombies, whichever you prefer. Uh, the game will support co-op play with a buddy. Um, your goal is to survive as many days or nights as possible. You will end up with a basic third-person game, fully networked in a small environment with interactive objects that you may use as a base for your own survival game. Now, yes, it will have networking capabilities, but no, this is not going to go in-depth on setting up a server, because that is out of the scope of this tutorial, and there's plenty of tutorials on that um, on YouTube. On the other hand, I may eventually decide to do that. Um, it's always a possibility. So just stay tuned and you never know where it takes us. We may decide that we want to go fully networked on it and set up a server and have a hundred people killing zombies with each other. So just stay tuned and we'll figure that one out as we go. Okay, so the first step is going, sorry, I'm looking over to see keep my eye on the timer to see where it's at um, plus I have to pause the video when I have to gather my thoughts so I don't sound stupid and go uh um uh and uh yeah you know <laughs> um, the first step is we need to open up Unreal Engine in this particular one we're going to be using Unreal Engine 4.8.3 which as of the recording of this video is the newest one I just downloaded it probably about an hour ago. Um, now it is quite possible that this code may not fully work and we may have to adapt and overcome and make it work. Which, that is not in the tutorial. So, again, hence why I am doing this. To hopefully help you guys because, like uh, Tom said in his introduction, it is not a step-by-step -step tutorial that he wrote. On the other hand, mine is, so there will be times that I may have to pause to figure out what's going on and get the right coding to make it work. So, just bear with me and we'll get through this together. So, what you're wanting to do is once it's opened up, um, I already pre-opened it because for some reason Unreal takes a really long time to open on my computer. Um, it runs just fine, everything else works just great, but it just takes forever on my computer to open. Once it's open, it's fine. Um, so you're going to want to go to the New Project tab and 
go to basic code under C++ tab. Make sure you're on here, not on Blueprint. Um, granted, with Blueprint, you can always add C++ code and all that, but it's just easier to start with basic code, C++. And we are going to name this survival game. And hit create project. So while this is creating the project, I am going to pause the video and I'll be right back. Okay, looks like it's uh, just about close to being finished. Let's open up my Visual Studio. Um, I'm using Visual Studio Ultimate 2013. Um, I also have Visual Studio 2015 Ultimate. Um, at this time, you can be using uh, the community version of Visual Studio as well. That will work, but it needs to be 2013. Um, I don't know if they have support for 2015 yet. I haven't really tried. I know it works with 2013, so that's what we will be using. So, um, looks like it's still loading up, so I'm gonna go ahead and pause for a little bit longer until it's finished. Okay. It is just finished loading up. It has absolutely nothing in it. <laughs> um, loaded up Visual Studio. Well, Visual Studio is still loading all the components. Um, that's the thing I really don't like about Visual Studio 2013 is C++ is extremely slow on it, um, especially with the IntelliSense and all that stuff. Um, on 2015, it's amazing, it's fast, it's awesome. And I hope Unreal supports 2015 soon. So, in the meantime, what we'll do is we'll go over to uh, Unreal Engine, and this is what you start with, a completely blank slate. This is going to be our game in a while. Well in a long while. We got a lot of work to do, so let's get started. If we click on where it says C++ classes, go to survival game, and the only thing in here is survival game mode. So that has already been created for us. Let me wait till Visual Studio is completely open, which it looks like it almost is. All right. Come on, Visual Studio. I'll pause while it's thinking. Yeah, as soon as I hit pause, it came back. <laughs> uh, or not. Oh, jeez. It's got to load up a bunch of files from the game engine. So this initial time, it does take quite a bit of time. Um, after that, it gets a lot faster. OK, looks like it is ready, I think. Anyways, let's click on source right here and see if it wants to. There we go. All right. So then you open up your survival game folder. And in here, we have our survival game mode, that one file that I told you about. It's automatically created for us, which is awesome. Um, survival game, the header and CPP file, that is automatically created for us as well as well as a C-sharp file called survival game build. That is the build system to compile the C++ code and integrate it into the engine. So, we shall begin. Let me just give you a brief overview. Um, on my other screen, I'm just gonna look at the web page and kind of tell you what this one is all about, what we're gonna be doing in this one. So we got, this section that we're working on now is going to set up the third person character movement with animation, object interaction, simple hunger system, sound, 
and particle playback, all with networking support. Um, each section covers a lot more subjects um, than is wrote down, but we are doing this step by step, so we will go through it step by step. Um, handling of sound and particle effects in C++, overriding existing game framework functionality, setting up of components using C++ character movement and behavior data in Anim Blueprint, advanced movement component to allow sprinting, advanced camera manipulation with field of view zoom, interacting with objects in the world. So that is what we will be doing in this first series. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to open up the survival game header file. So let's go ahead and wait for that to open. And it's very basic. What we need to do is, first thing, jump down here to line 7. Come on. There we go. This is not included by default in an empty project. It is required for replication and settings of the git life time replicated property. Okay, so basically what this is saying is this next line of code that we are going to write is not actually included by default in the MP project, as you can see, because it's not there. It is required for networking. So if you want networking support, this is required. So we're going to hash include which is a preprocessor directive. Net slash Unreal Network dot H. And that is it. That is all we need for the networking on this file. Then the next thing is we're going to open the implementation of survival game, which is survivalgame.cpp. So we're going to click on that. And it'll eventually speed up. It's just trying to read all the files from the engine right now, so it's taking forever. And we want to make sure implement primary game module default game module implementation, survival game, survival game is listed there. That tells the game engine this is what we are running. This is a game that we are running when we select it. So that is there by default, but if it's not, make sure you type that in. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do next, or well, not the first thing, because we've already done the first thing and the second thing. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to bind the functions to the key and mouse input for movement, because we want our character to move around. It's kind of hard to get away from the zombies if you can't move. So that is what we will be doing. So now we need to jump over back to Unreal. And we are going to right click in here, click on new C++ class. All right, now we're going to cho choose our parent class, which is going to be character, because we are creating a character. 
and hit next. And we are going to name this as S character. So as you can see, it's going to create a file called scharacter.h, which is the header file, and the CPP, which is the implementation, and create class. OK, so we got that done. Now you can see there's scharacter right here. That means that we successfully created those files. Let's jump back over to Visual Studio and it automatically opens up the cpp and .h file. So let's just take a quick look through this. Um, so the includes, those are automatically generated for us. Um, the as character, this is a naming convention that we use. Um, for, un oh man, my brain's not working. For Unreal Engine, the A stands for an actor. And then we named it S character. So those are the naming conventions that we have to use. As you can see, actor character, which is what this is derived from. We have to have those files. All right, so first thing, we're going to do is uh, make sure the macro u class is here. This lets the engine know that this is a class that's going to be implemented in the Unreal, uh, in the Unreal Engine. Um, survival game underscore API. Again, that is a macro, and basically what that means is it's going to put code in these spots right here where these bright green macros are. Um, Yours may be different colored, but it still all works the same. Um, <coughs> so first thing we're going to do under generated body is we're going to set up our private area with the colon and then enter. And under there, we are going to do a comment. And this is going to be the boom to handle distance to player mesh. All right. Let you guys catch up if you're a little slower to type. I'm trying not to type too horribly fast so you can code along with me because that's the whole purpose of this. Um, these macros are going to show as red squigglies. Doesn't mean they're wrong right now. It just takes time to include everything, and it could take a while before we get IntelliSense. That's what I was talking about, about hating how slow it is on 2013, whereas 2015, it's super fast. They did a really good job. Um, first thing we're going to do is add the macro U property. visible anywhere. And if you're not really familiar with macros, um, they do have lots of documentation on the macros on the Unreal um, Wiki where you can get more information. I'm not going to sit here and describe what each of these do because this would be a 20 hour video or longer. So we just don't have the time for that. Um, then the next thing is the category, which is what we're going to classify this under. Equals camera. Basically, um, what this macro is doing is it's going to put code in here um, to fill in the place of this macro. And what it's telling it to do is we want to categorize the next statement in the category camera um, inside of the editor. So that when we're in the editor 
and we create a blueprint of character, there will be a category called camera with this particular property inside of it. That's essentially what this does. Um, that's the super easy version right there. <laughs> uh, use spring arm component. Oops. Arm component. Yes, spelling and capitalization is very important here. And this is a pointer. And it's going to be called camera boom. Oops, not bomb. Boom comp for camera boom component. Pretty simple stuff. All right. Um, and the next property we're going to add is, uh, let me get my spacing so it looks pretty, so we can see what we're doing. And this is going to be the primary camera of the player. All right. So, again, U property. And we are going to use visible anywhere. Oops. And category. Is camera again because this still has to do with the camera that we're working with. All right, and you camera component, and this is a pointer as well, and it's gonna be called camera comp. Camera comp, okay want to make sure it's spelled correctly because we're going to have to use it later on as well. <laughs> okay, so that is all we need for our private variables or private components, I should say. Then the next thing under public. So we're just going to, come on, as soon as this wants to cooperate and stop thinking. Okay, I'm just gonna pause it for a moment while it catches up. Okay, sorry about that, guys. It wants to go slow and retarded. So, first thing we're gonna do is a virtual void post initialize components. override Boom. there we go then after that we are going to do our tick function which is already created by default but I am going to remove that and put it right there called every frame and then set up player input component same thing and there's that all right so let's drop that down and we <laughs> Making pretty things. And we're going to call this area movement. Perfect. All right, 
So first thing we're going to do is virtual void move forward. Now he can move. <laughs> Just kidding. I wish it were that easy, but it's not. Float, it's going to take a parameter of float, which we're going to call val for the value. Eh, let me do this proper and capitalize. Make sure you're ending it with a semicolon, otherwise you're going to run into issues. And then virtual, whoops, no capital, virtual void move right. And we're going to call this a float again with a value. Now these aren't the same value. Um, just so you know what's going on, the only reason I'm doing move forward instead of move forward and move back is because in the input inside of Unreal Engine, where we're going to set up later, it takes a positive number for forward and a negative number for backwards. So it goes between negative one and one. And anything in between is the amount. So we only need move forward. We could just call it move, but that would be a little awkward since moving right and left. Um, so we're just doing the main one, move right and move forward. So that's why I'm doing it like this, in case anyone was wondering. And then we're going to go client mapped to input. All right. Oops. All right. Void on. Oops. Guess I could do capitalization on crouch. And this is not going to take any inputs as parameters. And we're going to just copy this because I don't feel like typing it. I am being a lazy programmer. You never want to do this because that could get you in trouble. You should always type it out. Void on start jump. Yes, we want to be able to jump as well. Okay. And then void on start sprinting. Yes, we want to run too, in case we want to run from the zombies. Because we all know zombies are slow and we can outrun them. So if all else fails, run. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to say character wants to run. Character always wants to run. Checked. During tick. Now what tick is, is that's um, that's a loop that gets called every frame of the scene. So for every tick, we want to check that the customer, or pff, customer, the character, it wants to run. It's checked every tick um, to see if it's allowed. That's what this next one is going to do. And this is a U property. Yes, because we want to be able to set this transient. Replicated. This has to do with networking. Um, basically, 
this is going to check and replicate it to the server so the server knows what's going on. Otherwise, you'll just see the characters standing there instead of running around. Um, on your screen, you'll see them running around, but any other players that are playing alongside of you, you won't. That's why we have this. This is a Boolean value. B wants to run. Of course he wants to run. He's scared. Okay. Then we're going to check to see if the character is jumping. Is character currently performing a jump action. This is going to reset on landed. And again, U property and transient. replicated <coughs> and this one is bull B you guessed it is jumping oh that's not a function <laughs> okay then after that we're gonna do a u function And inside the U function parameters, we want blueprint callable because we want to be able to call this from a blueprint category. Whoa, I can't spell today. Category equals movement <laughs> all right and then this is a boolean value is initiated initiated jump and this is going to be a constant It's going to take in a boolean value. New jumping. And there we go. And we're going to do another U function. And this is. Wait a second. Okay, I see where I'm. That's a U function. Reliable. And server. With validation, with validation, and this is going to be void. with the 
boolean value is jumping or new jumping. New jumping. And then void on landed. And this is going to take in a constant. Um, F result hit perfect and we're going to want to override this Is this error? Did I misspell override? On landed. Uh, it may just be uh, goofy stuff that's not really an error right now. We will check that when we compile and test. So, moving on. Client <coughs> local call to update. Set sprint state. No, not set sprint state, sprinting. <coughs> Boolean value. server side call to update actual sprint state okay um, this is a u function Void server set sprinting. It's going to what the hell? fingers weren't hitting the right button void server set sprint state and it's going to take in a boolean value called new sprinting function 
you will get to memorize these after a while. Um, you're going to use them so much, these macros. So it, they sound or they seem a little scary at first, but you get used to them. Blueprint callable and category equals movement and boolean is sprinting and const all right that still hasn't gone away um I might have to figure that one out before we get too far along, but we're just going to go with it for right now. So next one is going to be a float. Git sprint. Sprinting. That doesn't look right to me. Sprinting. Okay. Speed modifier. Eh. Well, if it's not right, that's okay. Because we'll just use it anyways. Just misspelled. But... const and we're going to do a u property and this is edit default defaults don't forget the s only category minus equals movement and this is float sprinting speed modifier that looks good to me So we're going to scroll up and steal this pretty ASCII art. Not really ASCII art, but steal the pretty little banner. And we're going to call this object interaction. Oh, it messed up. There we go. Fixed it. Don't stress, it's fixed. <coughs> actor currently in focus if any yes virtual come on use Oop. perfect then we're gonna do <coughs> let me scroll this up we're gonna do a u function next and we're gonna pass in server and we're gonna pass in reliable and we're going to pass in with validation. Void. Sir. 
server use there. semicolon. Okay, next thing we're going to do is create a class. A usable actor pointer and get usable in view. That wasn't so hard now, was it? <laughs> okay, this next one is going to be max distance to use focus on actors. Now, actors are just objects in the game world. In case uh, anyone is wondering or not quite sure what an actor is. U property. Edit defaults only. And category. Equals. Object. Interaction. And this is going to be a float. Max use distance. Because we want to set the maximum distance in order to grab objects. We don't want to be able to grab them from clear across the map. Okay, next thing, true only in first frame when focused on a new usable actor. And this is going to be a boolean. B has new focus. Yes or no. That's what a boolean is. Yes or no, true or false, one or zero. And then class. Whoa, one too many S's. <laughs> a usable actor. Pointer focused usable actor focused usable usable actor perfect next thing targeting Void on start targeting on start targeting. Okay. Void on end targeting. So we want that function as well. Void 
set targeting. It's going to take in a Boolean value. New targeting. And we're going to create a U function macro. And server reliable with validation. And I need to get a drink really quick, so I'm going to pause the video for a moment. Sorry about that, guys. I was thirsty, and I am back. Um, I think what I'm going to do is copy and paste from my notes. So let me, uh, instead of typing it, because I'm sure some people type faster, and this video is already up almost at an hour, so to try to keep the length down a little bit, I think I might want to do this. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start copy and pasting the targeting, um, like the whole section, and then we'll move to the next section, so on and so forth. Because while you guys are playing this, you can pause it to type it out if you're following along. And what I will do is I will go through and explain um, after each or what each function is doing. So give me one moment. All right, so let's copy and paste. All right, so we got void server set targeting. It's gonna take in a Boolean value with new targeting. Then we're gonna work on aiming down the sights because while we have a gun in our hand, we want to be able to look down the sights and aim in. This is going to be a U function, blueprint callable. Category is targeting. The Boolean value is targeting, and that's a constant as well. Then we're going to do a float get targeting speed modifier. That is a constant as well, and what that's going to do is that is a modifier to let us determine how fast we want it to aim down the sights, or how fast to remove the aiming and go back to normal. Then we're going to retrieve the pitch and yaw from the current camera, and this is a U function, blueprint callable, category is targeting. It's going to take in or it is of the class F rotator and it's called get aim offsets basically what this is going to do is that's going to take the position from the camera and it's going to offset it by a certain amount so it'll always be a constant number and no matter where we're looking that's where we'll be aiming then we're going to do a U property with transient and replicated. And the Boolean B is targeting. And then U property, edit defaults only. Category, again, is targeting. Then float targeting speed modifier. All right, I'll give you a little bit uh, of time to catch up. Now, you're, you may notice that uh, some of these you see twice. Um, one is actually getting it, and the other is actually the value that we're going to be getting. So it's not actually the same thing. And go ahead and pause the video, and then we'll continue on. All right, welcome back. Next thing we're going to be working on is the hunger system. So let me copy and paste. All right, hit points and hunger. First, we're going to do a U function, blueprint callable, category, player condition. Then it's going to be a float called get health, and that is a constant. 
and then we're going to do another U function, same blueprint callable, category, player condition. And this is a float get hunger, which is also a constant. Then we're doing a U function, blueprint callable, category is player condition. Float, get max health, and that is a constant. Then another function, U function. Um, blueprint callable, category, player condition. Float, get max hunger. I don't know, did I already do that one? I don't remember. And that is also a constant. Then we're going to do another U function, blueprint callable, category, player condition, void, consume food. And that's going to take a parameter of float, amount restored. So this is going to allow us to tell it how much that particular food item restores of our energy. Then we got U function, blueprint callable, category, player condition, boolean is alive. This lets the game know if we are alive or dead. Obviously we'll want to know that. If we're dead, we're probably a zombie, but we don't turn into zombies in this game, unfortunately. So once you're dead, you're dead. Now we need to increment the hunger used by the timer. Um, basically, it's just like real life. Over a certain time period, the hungrier you're going to get. Um, the hungrier you get, the less energy you have. The less energy you have, the harder it is for you to move around and fight zombies and do all the stuff that you need to do, collecting things and stuff like that. So we're going to make sure that we need to create a void increment hunger. And this will basically reduce our energy level over time. That's the short and simple of it. Then we got U property. Um, edit defaults only, category, player condition. And this is a float increment hunger interval. And that's basically the interval is how much in that time frame. Or, I'm sorry. Um, how long between it reducing your energy, I guess you would say. Uh, U property, edit defaults only, category, player condition, float, increment, hunger, amount. That's the actual amount that it goes down. Then we're going to limit when the player suffers hit points from extreme hunger. U property, edit defaults only, category, player condition, float, critical hunger threshold. That is when we are extremely hungry. That is when we're in bad shape and our stomach is cramping and we're laying on the ground, like twitching like a zombie. Then we got a U property, edit defaults only, category, player condition, and it's going to be replicated to the server. This is a float called health. That will be our health amount. That's uh, I'm sure you guys could have probably figured that one out. Then we got a U property, edit defaults only, category, player condition, replicated to the server. And this is a float called hunger. And you're probably asking why the critical hunger threshold and those are not replicated to the server, that is because that only has to do with your player's condition. Um, the server needs to know what your player's health is and your hunger level. It doesn't need to know if you're at a critical hunger threshold, um, what the amount it increments. Those are just to your character only. Your character only needs to know that, not the server. The server needs to know about your health and your hunger. And the next one, um, max hunger does not need to be replicated. Only values that change and are displayed or used by clients should ever be replicated. So there you go. U property, edit defaults only, category, player condition, float max hunger. All right, go ahead and pause the video and then we'll pick up in a couple moments.
Moving on to the next area. Okay. Well, sorry, I just uh, copied and pasted in damage, hit, and death. Um, this is a real easy one. That's why I just did that. Uh, I don't think you need to watch me do that. But <coughs> basically, uh, take damage and handle death. This is going to be a virtual float. Take damage. It's going to take in a float of damage, a struct of F damage event, constant, damage event. Class is going to be a controller, pointer, event instigator. Class of a actor, pointer, damage causer. And that's going to be override. If you haven't figured it out already, usually the virtuals are overridden. We are usually overriding them, but that is all that is for the header file. That is quite a bit, I know. Um, next, we're going to go and look at the implementation. This is going to be quite large as well. So again, I'm going to continue to copy and paste to make it easy. All right, let's go ahead and flip on over to the implementation file. There may be stuff in here already, but we'll go through it step by step and we will get it all set up. Now, just so you know, um, this will not be ready to implement as soon as we are done with the character. Um, I think after we're finished with the character, I am going to um, end the video there and then we'll pick up on the next part of it after this video. Um, we'll separate it like this because this video is getting quite large. It's already at an hour. Um, so you won't be able to hit compile and run and have it working and running around in your game world yet. Um, I will show you when we are ready for that step though. So let's continue on. Okay, first thing we're going to do is throw in some include files. These are of stuff that we haven't created yet like usable actor, HUD, character movement component. We will get to those, so don't worry. But for right now, just make sure you're adding this in there. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is under AS character, colon, colon, AS character, which is scoping to AS character from the header file. Inside the parentheses, we need to throw in some parameters. This is going to be a constant class, F object initializer, and object initializer. All right. And then, um, give me one second. Okay. And then it's going to add super object initializer, set default sub object class. U S character movement component, which we haven't created yet. And then that takes a parameter of a character scope to character movement component name. All right, so I just pasted in the next bit of code um, for that particular constructor. And first we're setting the character to call tick every frame. You can turn this off to improve performance if you don't need it. Primary actor tick dot b can ever tick equals true. Now that is there by default so you can just start below that if that's already there. If not you need to add that. Then u character movement component pointer called move comp equals get character movement. Then adjust the jump to make it less floaty. So move comp and then uh, I don't really know what these things are called, but um, I just call it arrow gravity scale equals 1.5 F. And that is Unreal's version of gravity. Um, 1.5 is the correct gravitational force. So that's why that is there. Um, you can adjust that and you can get weird stuff like you're in water or 
other things, but uh, we are not going to mess with that at this moment. Then move comp arrow jump Z velocity. Now the Z velocity is up and down, how fast it goes up and down. So that's 620 right now. Then move comp it can walk off ledge when crouching is true. Because, yeah, you can walk off a ledge when you're crouching. That would be pretty dumb, but you can do it. Then max walk speed crouched is 200. So these are all variables which we'll be able to adjust. Then we're going to enable crouching. Move component get nav agent properties ref uh, dot b can crouch equals true. Now the camera boom component or comp equals object initializer uh, create default sub object use spring arm component this text is camera boom now text is again a macro so just go with it then the socket offset f vector 0 35 0 now that is the actual position of the socket that's where it is now 0 0 0 is going to be the absolute center of the object in this case the camera boom component um, then the target offset is 0, 0, 055. Then B use pawn controller rotation equals true because we want to use the rotation of the pawn. Um, you will see in a little while why this is important. If you don't have this, you will not be able to rotate. Uh, you may or may not even be able to move at all. Then we're going to attach it to the parent, which is the root com get root component, which that is going to be the a default root component, um, and everything's going to be attached to that. And once we get in the editor, I will show you exactly what I'm talking about there. Then camera comp equals object initializer dot create default sub object you camera component this text camera now remember that um, these squiggles may or may not be uh, accurate so object initializer may be taken out of 4.8.3 so we may have to come and change that um, once we are to the point where we can compile and test it then we will know for sure and we will make adjustments at that point it's not going to be nearly as much coding as we're doing right now because you'll have the majority of it already there we may just have to change some couple of, uh, f functions or words or whatever we don't know at this point um, we're just gonna go with it and if we got to change it we got to change it that's part of the development process then max use distance is equal to 800 has new focus is true now these are all just defaults okay you're going to be able to change this in the editor and you will see when we get there targeting speed modifier is 0.5 f sprinting speed modifier is 2.5 f health is going to be 100 increment hunger amount is 1, 1.0 F. Increment hunger interval is 5.0 F. Critical hunger threshold is 90. Max hunger is 100. Hunger is zero. So remember, this is gonna increment over time. When it gets to 90% uh, hungry, you're gonna be in a world of hurt. <laughs> All right, so go ahead and catch up. Sorry, didn't mean to move that on you. And then we'll move on to the next one. All right, hopefully you guys got that all done. Um, again, you can move the video, rewind. That's a nice thing about it. So we're gonna do the next area. I'm gonna copy and paste. And this is void as character 
colon colon post initialize components. And first thing that we are going to do is use the super of the class and post initialize components. Then the only thing in here is if role is equal to role underscore authority, then we're going to set a timer to increment hunger every interval. F timer handle, handle is the name of it, then get world uh, arrow get timer manager dot set timer, and that's going to take in handle this reference to as character colon colon increment hunger comma increment hunger interval comma true and that is all for that one that was pretty simple go ahead and get that typed out then we'll move on to the next okay so the next one is we're gonna work on is tick um, that should already be there by default if not it's void as character colon colon tick and then float delta time and inside the first thing is always going to be the super of tick and delta time we always want to run that first and then everything else that we're overriding it with we're going to do after that so let's go ahead and paste in the code okay so if b wants to run and it's not is sprinting then set sprinting to true Okay, that's pretty self-explanatory. Then, if controller and controller is local controller, then a usable, what? AS usable actor. I think that's supposed to be a usable actor. Um, let me just double check on that. Okay, no, that's correct. Um, that's just something that we haven't created yet. That's going to be one of our next sections that we do. Um, usable equals get usable in view. Then an ending focus. If focused usable actor not equal to usable, then if focused usable actor is true, then focused usable actor on end focus then B has new focus is true then we're going to assign a new focus focused usable actor is equal to usable then we're going to start the focus if usable then if B has new focus usable on begin focus B has new focus is false and that is it for that one so the, it's really not a lot it's just in C++ sometimes it takes a lot of code to do just something really simple like you know determine if something has focus or not I mean that's all that this section is doing essentially um, we're checking the focus and seeing if it has focus or not half focus if it does then we're going to change it to half focus if not then vice versa so on and so forth it's actually very simple um, once we get into the editor you will see what we're talking about okay the next one is um, we're doing the binding functionality to input and at this point, this again should already be there by default. But if it's not, go ahead and add it. Then after the super player input component, we are going to add our code. So the first part we're going to do is the movement. Input component bind axis move forward. Remember we named it move forward, move right. Um, we are going to be adding all of these into the bindings inside of the engine when we go in there. So if you don't understand it right now, you will in a little while. Um, 
so these input component binding the axis is, go ahead and do the movement section. It should start falling into place and you should start seeing the connection between what we've been typing. Um, if not, just go back and look at what you've already typed and you can see where the correlation is between both of these. All right, the next section is interaction. Again, we're gonna be doing a binding interaction. This is our use button. Um, we need a button to say, hey, I wanna use this item. I want to use this door. I wanna open this door. I wanna close this door. I want, you know, I'm sure you've all played like Left 4 Dead or some of those games. You use like the E or the U button and you can choose to use particular objects in the game world. That's what we are doing here. Then go ahead and set up the one for your weapons. And this is our targeting. Um, this is our targeting beginning and targeting ending. So basically that's why it's in there twice and it's called targeting because again, it's calling two different functions um, on start targeting and on to end targeting. And the same thing with the jump and the same thing with the sprint. So you kind of understand what's going on. I mean, if you have any questions um, exactly what these things do, feel free to ask in the comments below and we'll do our best to answer your questions. Um, hopefully we'll be able to answer it to the best of your ability so we can help you understand because ultimately that's what our goal is to help you understand what is going on. Um, it's one thing just to copy and paste and type, but to actually understand what your code is doing, that's when you start actually learning and really knowing what's going on. And that's when it starts sinking in. So feel free to ask questions. Um, we won't tolerate anyone uh, trolling anyone for asking questions. If this is something you already know and you want to answer, feel free. But remember, not everyone is advanced at you. Um, everyone started somewhere at some point. So just keep it cool and everything will be good because I will delete comments that are trolling. So go ahead and copy this and then we'll move on to the next section. All right, now the next area we're gonna do is the move forward. Now, just so you guys understand what we're doing, if you come back up here, move forward. See this a the reference to AS character colon colon move forward? That is what we're doing right here. So that is calling when you push that button, it is calling this function. And basically all this is doing is if the controller and val, the value, is not equal to zero point F. Limit pitch when walking or falling. So we got our constant Boolean B limit rotation. This is to set minimum, maximum. Um, we're putting restrictions on it so we just don't spin infinitely or pitch or rotate or any of that. So is equal to character movement is moving on ground. That means not while we're jumping or get character movement is falling. So, or if we're falling, this is when it's gonna happen. So if we're walking or falling, we can't move around infinitely and get all weirded out. Um, next is the constant F rotator, rotation equals B limit rotation, that's what we just did up here. And that is, um, this question mark is, in case you don't know, it's basically shorthand in C++ for, um, if it's true, do this, if it's false, do this. So basically, if the limit rotation is this right here, then we're getting actor rotation. Um, if it's controller, get control rotation. So it's either 
getting the controller rotation or it's getting the actor rotation. So essentially that's what it's doing. Then we got your constant F vector direction, um, F rotation matrix, and that takes in a rotation, dot get scaled axis, which is a enum of axis, which is X. So we're saying that we want it to use the rotation matrix on X. Then we're adding movement input and the direction, the X direction, and the value. All right, now let's move on to move right. So it's basically the same signature as the move forward. Then again, if validation, or the not validation, the value is not equal to zero, because zero is the center value. That means it's not, it's not right or left. Now the constant F rotator rotation is equal to get actor rotation constant F vector direction equals F rotation matrix, then it's taken in the rotation, dot get scaled axis, and this is on the Y. So if you look at the chart um, of the axes, X is kind of left to right, um, and Y is kind of forward, or I'm sorry, X is forward and backwards, um, Y is left and right. So that's why the move right is on the Y axis. So zero is the center point. Anything positive Y is moving to the right. Anything negative Y is moving to the left. Uh, the same with X. Anything positive X is moving forward. Anything negative X is moving backwards. Zero is the center point. Then add movement input, um, which is the direction and the value. Okay, this video is getting really long, so um, sorry to do this, but I am going to paste the rest of the code and then just put it up on the screen. Um, honestly, if you guys have any questions, I mean, the code is pretty simple. Um, as far as what it is. Um, if you do have any questions though, just feel free to reach out and I will answer your questions. Um, or someone else that's viewing this may be able to answer your questions as well. Either way, your answers will get, your questions will get answered. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. <coughs> and again, you know, I'm gonna go one screen at a time so you can copy and type out what it shows and then Move on to the next section, unpause, go to the next section. Um, and then, yeah, the homework that I actually have is just kind of read over your code and really try to grasp the concept of what it's doing, what it's trying to tell you. So here we go. Boom. Uh, let me scroll back up. Yeah, there's a lot of short code, but there's a lot. That's just all there is to it. There's a lot of code left. So, performing ray trace and get usable. So, this area first. All right. Moving on. And moving on. Now there's quite a bit in here that have the red squiggly lines. Um, it's not fully implemented yet because 
like I said, there's still quite a bit that we have um, on this first section, and it's actually going a lot longer than I expected. So I'm going to try to figure out a way to uh, kind of shorten the videos. Um, I think this might be the best way. I mean, I still want you to see the coding part of it going on um, and really have a chance to sit and talk with you guys and you know, help explain what it's doing because, I mean, yeah, anyone can copy and paste all day long, but to really understand, you need to read what you're typing and, um, you know, just go over it and follow the direction that it's going and see exactly what it's doing. When it does this, what's it doing? When it does that, what's it doing? All right, moving on. And again, like I said, some of this code may not work with 4.83, so we may be changing some of this. And, you know, with at an hour and a half almost, this is a uh, pretty long video, so, you know, just kind of get through it. And then once we get to a point where we can compile and check, then we'll know if we have to change anything. And that's where the fun starts beginning. All right, and moving on. Oh, come on, just a little bit more. Oh, right there. And moving on. All right. Continuing on. We're almost through it, guys. As you can see, there's quite a bit of, um, you know, single line code in some of these functions. So it's not too terribly complicated. It's just a lot. And when you start reading it, you'll you'll see that you'll understand. All right, moving on. And I think we should probably get the rest of it in this last little bit. So let's take a look. Uh, pretty close. All right, let's check it out. Yep, that's it. All right, so we made it through that, guys. Um, Make sure you save. You can't really compile yet, so we're not gonna even attempt it. Um, let me just take a look and see. You can see we got a lot of errors still. Um, a lot of files that are missing still. You know, like this get lifetime replicated props. Why is that missing? Did we not put that in our header file? Oh, we're still missing some stuff though. That's what it is. 
Yeah, I can start sprinting on in sprinting. We're gonna we're gonna have to make some edits here, but uh, that's okay. That's what we're here for, right? Writing code. All right, guys, and I will see you next time. Here we are, an hour and a half. So um, next one, I think, will be a little bit shorter. Until then, see you next time.